Right, so I've got now the uh, the levels added above the ground floor, and I'm a bit more certain about those. Uh, and then, probably just as importantly, I've got the car park levels as well, um, which I'm going to adjust now, actually, and uh, and make into something that we all have, uh, well, something similar to what you all have. So here I've got four metres floor to floor, and I think that's what most of you have gone to now. Is that right? Or are you trying to do less than that? Trying to do three metres floor to floor? Yeah. yeah. So don't, don't try to be too... I know you can get car parks to have fairly low ceilings, but it's not always a good idea because there will be services and things that you'll forget about. And uh, three metres floor to floor, that's pretty tight. Because... There, there's a strong chance that you'll need to be able to get garbage trucks in there as well. So, if you can take it down to... So, leave, leave, what I'd be doing is leave the ground floor um, at the height it's at. And if you can have it either here or there's a bit of room to go, go down even further. But then just adjust the car park levels down from there. And you can go down a fair way. You've still got plenty of room for the ramp. So, you can take it down quite a long way. And... Uh, Look, you probably could take it to three metres floor to floor if you really pushed it and checked everything, but again, higher is better. And uh, yeah, there, there's you know lots of things again that, that will need that extra height anyway. So, so I'm going to do it four metres floor to floor. If yours is less and you really need it to be less, the fire stairs will be easier because you'll have less steps. But uh, so here, what I'm showing is that with still you know quite a decent distance there. Um, I shouldn't have any trouble getting the fire stairs with the, the space I've got set out for them. So I'm going to delete this one because I did that uh, earlier and, uh, and I know that there are a few things there that are wrong. So, oh yes, I'm recording. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 uh, so the main issue looking at the plan is that the treads here uh, are out. Um, so, also, oh actually, I was going to delete the whole thing, but actually, instead of doing that, it, it, it's very easy to make it again from scratch, but it's probably um, good to see if you want to edit it. Go to Edit Sketch. And so, well, actually, you know, there are more than that. So, it's this tread here is obviously different to the one at the bottom. So, as I've been making adjustment, that's gone out of whack, and this happens all the time. So, 280 and then 250. And then here, I don't know if it's just my screen. No, that one's 250 as well, so that's fine. Okay, so I'll just delete the first, also oh the last flight, and then you'll see that the landing should go as well. And now to draw in a new flight, um, I need to make sure I've got a reference plane that's 500 from the corner here, and I do. So that's okay. So I can then just use the run tool, and I'll have a look at the rise account, but I'm not going to change that. So I'm just checking to see that it's um, got a riser height that I'm happy with. And then I'll leave the width on 1000 as well. So now I can draw from the intersection of those reference planes, zooming right in to make sure I get the right one, and take it over to the right uh, as far as it can go. And then I'm going to come back one. Right, so this is the trick with monolithic stairs. Um, that's what I'll often do. Leave the last step off. Um, so I'll show you that. So when you when you do it that way, and you can see here again, it's snapping strangely to something that it shouldn't. So that's the, where the one the 280 treads are coming. So that's no good. So I'm going to undo that, and uh, and then try and draw the run again. But this time, pay a bit more attention to where it's snapping. So it's going 250, 250. See there, 750, that's right, 1000. So these are all 250 increments, and uh, that's because over here, oh, there it is. Okay, so that's why it keeps going to 280, it keeps defaulting back. I don't know why they even do that, but sometimes with your templates, it'll have the monolithic stair set to these crazy depths that comes from America or something. Um, but, uh, but again, um, 250 is um, minimum. And then here, if you go to edit type, you'll see this is why it keeps going back because there's a minimum tread depth in here of 280, which is, again, ridiculous. 250, and then for the riser, 190. Okay, of course, should be the maximum. So, 
So look, they've done their best to put the settings for Australia, but uh, I think it's actually the guys in Singapore who do the Australian templates, and so they're not going to know a lot of these things. Sometimes you get lucky and they get it right, but most of the time you've got to check it. Um, and so then, uh, okay, so again, starting now on the intersection, we can see, hopefully, that there we are, snapping in increments of 250 and going along, that's much better. So I'll go all the way to the end, and then, yeah, I can even tell visually, oh, well, no, sorry, they're changing. It's just, I don't know why they even let you do this, but there, that's 250. That looks bigger at the end. Oh, no, okay, it's just me on the screen. But that will happen. Sometimes you will see them slightly off. And I'll uh, just show you that because it's something you've just got to watch out for. So say if I snap just to one side, and normally it'll be if you snap to something else. Uh, there we go. That's, that's going to do it. There you go. So that'll happen. Sometimes the last tread won't be right just because it'll snap to something that you, that you can't even see. So you just need to make sure you check for that. Otherwise, um, the one tool's pretty good. And uh, so I've got my 250 risers, but again, I'm gonna select that, so 250 treads, and I'm gonna select that run line now and drag it back one, simply because it's a monolithic stair and I know why they decided to make them like this was because engineers think of them a bit this way they, they think of the, the last step really as being part of the stair not part of the floor that it's connecting to so, so this is what happens when you make the, uh, a monolithic stair with the riser count here you can see it's on 23 but then the actual number is one less so because I dragged it back but it's still divided properly so the distance the riser height here is the same as the distance from that last step to the floor so I'll just show you what would happen if I if I'd left that last step in so if I drag this back across one step so now it's got 23 risers finish that and now in section so you can see it's got that extra step. Again, in some ways that's technically more correct, but for architectural drawings, it's not right. You shouldn't show it like that. And it looks messy if you do. So, um, so again, simple trick is to just have one less step than, not than it needs, but than one less than you have in the desired number here. So your desired number needs to be what you get by dividing your floor to floor height by 190 or however you want to work it out so that's your desired number and then the actual number should be one less than that so again and that's one of those things even if it, if it still seems confusing don't worry too much because when you do it a few times it will make more sense and it is just a peculiar rabbit thing that I wish they would fix but uh, for now that's, that's how it is so looking at my sections you can see then I've got this stair only on the bottom car park level but now to go into my um, level above I can simply in properties change this multi-story top but now if I've got the top level that goes to car park one so that's how it gets the riser height by dividing that between the number of risers your floor to floor so that needs to stay because that's your fundamental calculation but then the multi-story is just going to repeat that so if I choose ground floor now as my multi-story top which is going to repeat that stair up to the next level which might make your life easy yeah I know it's a really handy option but, yep, yep. but no look it's an easy thing to change because you can just in any stair change that property and so and if you're doing the copying and pasting thing don't worry that's what I did for years anyway and uh, so, but then you can see that this issue now is a bit more obvious because the stair doesn't connect to the floor. That's right, exactly. Now, railings are even worse. Getting them to connect to each other and other things is just impossible sometimes. You can see here, it's not even joining there. And it's the one railing over here, you'll have issues. And 
I don't know what they can do about that actually I sort of feel sorry for them because the developers because even if you're an architect who'd worked for a long time on uh, on these things and you had a really good pro strong programming background um, and you know, I, I've done a lot of programming and have uh, some idea how to do these things I'd have to really think about how to get that to work it's not, a, not an obvious thing um, just because of the nature of railings uh, it's and it's something you'll see in the building controls they have um, special exemptions for railings for the height of a railing at certain points on the stair because when you're projecting and measuring from the landing up to a straight line you can see there that's 1100 but if I measure from say the corner of this step up to that that diagonal line you can see that's 1100 but that means from the back of the step it's going to be much higher so obviously the steps flat but the railing sloping so at different points along that step relative to the flat um, step the railing is obviously changing height and so this railing is much higher than it would need to be um, you can go much lower and if we look at say 900 that's a lot more typical so again here if we measure this one from the corner there to the railing is 900 and uh, if we measure it over here again it will be as well so that's 900 to there but from the corner of this step say to the point here uh, vertically would be would be less than that yeah there you get a bit more control that's actually why they bought the new stair tool in so you get m more control but it's it's pretty hard to use you know, I, I did stair by sketch, but Ah, then it you must have done stair by component. So you probably did stair by component, and then um, then there's a sketch option in there. You might have chosen that. But I'll have a look in a second anyway. Um, so what, what I'd be doing though if I was you with the railings is simply setting it to the one that you most commonly have in a fire stair, which is the 900 pipe. All right, that's a typical fire stair. Um, the railing up against the wall can most probably be deleted and um, that will get you out of a lot of problems but then where you've got connections like this if you need to show it uh, again it's often easier to fix it in 2D with the annotation tools in Revit and uh, if I go to hidden line here though uh, it'll probably hide some of the problems as well uh, and then here where you've got the um, stair edge coming out for the DA it's probably not as important um, as it will be later but at some point you'll definitely have to continue that through and up here it's a real problem because that just looks terrible so again you've got to extend that through and um, and show part of the, the next step uh, so one way to get around that actually rather than using the continuous stair Oh, yeah, you'd think so. I've tried things like that. No, unfortunately, because the stairs won't connect to each other properly. Yeah, it's a painful thing. Yeah, it'd be good if that worked. But so, uh, we've also got to remember that your floors will be thicker than this. So when you have thicker floors, that'll mask a lot of those problems as well. And again, this is why, I, you know, I just pray that one day the Autodesk guys will fix these things. Uh, so... So there though, with a thicker floor, it's not as bad and really all you could do then is add in a line and, uh, and that solves it. So think of it as a drawing tool, not a full 3D modeling tool for things like fire stairs. Um, that's all it is. So now I've got the, the ground floor stairs to worry about. These are going to be unique. So you can't just repeat the ground floor stairs um, through the building because the height of the ground floor is different to everything else. So that's when you need to draw a new stair. And also you can start to look at the cutouts that you need for the, um, the other stairs. So I've got there the uh, just the car park and the ground floor level that need holes for the for the fire stair. And and they should be the same because the stairs are the same, so the voids should be the same. Uh, so I'm sure you know that you can go to edit boundary. Uh, and cut a hole that way and that's often 
uh, a good option. So, so make sure you know that um, well, that tool, that option with flaws. It's um, probably the most fundamental. But then again, when you have especially uh, the same uh, void on multiple levels, you've got the shaft tool. So, so these are all good. If you don't know about that panel, or if you only know some of them, make sure you have a look at all of them. They're all good. Uh, the wall opening tool is probably the worst of them, but it's still handy. Vertical opening is really useful for floors and ceilings and things like that. Uh, and the dormer tool is fantastic when it works. Doesn't always work. Sometimes you've got to do it manually. And, and you can do everything that the dormer tool does, you can do manually. But when it works and you're doing a dormer, it's, it's brilliant. Um, even the opening by face is, is pretty good. So they're all useful, and a lot of people don't notice or have a look at all those tools. Um, so again, the shaft tool is the one I'm going to use starting on the lower car park level. I'm going to click shaft and take a stab at the, um, the shape of the, the void that I need. And here I might even decide, actually I'm going to close this and cancel because now I think about it, if I just make a slight adjustment here, I can probably uh, make it a better shaft. And this is sort of the of the design process once you get beyond the concept. So I've got there a gap of 1100 to the wall. So that's a bit tight actually. And uh, so what I want to do is bring this edge back maybe to line up with this um, step. So I was thinking I could bring this one out, but instead uh, I might have to add it to the flight in the middle. Let's have a look on the ground floor. And uh, yeah, I think we can do that. So, okay, so I'm just going to go and edit that first. And uh, so, a couple of ways of doing it. Probably if I select all of these lines and then click the move button, click a base point, move it in the direction, and type in 250. That will work. And it has, but it's extended this, or made this flight wider. Uh, so I'll try fixing that using the Align tool. Great, it's worked. So quite often when you're editing things, especially if it's being made with the Run tool, there's a lot of trial and error. Um, and uh, if it doesn't work, um, you can always draw these things manually. But now I can just copy the, the riser, the extra riser I need manually and that should all work as a stair except that now I'm back to having 23 desired and 23 actual remember I want one less so I can just like before drag this back one and that's better if those line up click finish so then I can make my shaft and so I'll start with a rectangle. I'm going to start on the corner of my stairs and then bring it down to the corner of the wall. So that would work basically to make a hole for the stairs to rise through and still give you the ability to uh, step onto the floor from both ends of the stairs. So, so that works. And I'll finish it and just show you though there is one other little issue. Okay, so I've cut my hole and I just left the default settings so you can see what they do. So with the default settings, it's on a base offset of minus 150, starting on that level. Okay, so there it's gone into the slab um, on the car park. I can just change the base offset to positive 150. And then it starts above that floor and won't affect it. It's going through the floor I want it to, so that's good. But then I need to go through the ground floor as well, so I'm going to change the top constraint to ground floor. And then, just to make sure it goes right through the floor, I'll put a top offset in there as well of 150. Doesn't matter. So, I've made the hole in the floor, but now you can see that other problem, which is that this stair is sitting on nothing. Floating, not being supported. So, like I was saying, I think the easy way of resolving that is just to extend the floor out. But remember, we can't extend the floor by going to edit boundary because I've made the hole using the shaft. 
So the shaft is like a void, it's an object you can select usually just by finding the edge and it'll go, oh it doesn't go orange but it's, it's been like a void. Uh, and then I can go back to the plan view, edit sketch and I'm going to then just put in a dog leg shape going around that first step. So in other words an L shape there, just tracing those lines, trim to corner and tick to finish. So back into the section and we should then at least have something under the stairs. Um, if you want to get rid of that heavy line, I said this is where Revit really frustrates me, but I'll show you a couple of tricks. Um, the line work tool, if you don't know, is one of the best things in Revit because it overrides a lot of those issues. So here you've got all the different pen styles in your project, and you can make as many as you want. They're just like AutoCAD uh, layers, really. So you can have whatever line weight, whatever color, whatever line type, just like AutoCAD. It is, it's actually, they, they took it from AutoCAD. So then in the um, line styles here, I'm going to choose invisible lines. Then I can choose a line and it makes it disappear. Now, you can't see that because it's under the floor, but it has disappeared, the line at the bottom of that step. So I'll just choose one over here so you, just so you can see. So that's um, on one side. So the thin line there is from the railing, but the edge of the steps disappeared now. So I want to see that one. So instead of invisible lines, now I'll change it back. Do you know how to set things back to what they were in Rapid? <laughs> think so, but yeah, you can do. But um, Probably what's not obvious is that everything in Revit, n or almost everything, is set by category. So if you know in AutoCAD, it's by layer. So by category is the same thing. Categories and layers are the same thing. And um, so if you choose by category, right, so that's, I'm still overriding the line work, but I'm overriding it to set it back to that default setting by category. And now I can choose the line and it goes back to the way it was. That's one trick with the line work tool. And then another really good one is to choose, instead of choosing invisible lines all the time, which is what a lot of people do, you can use one of the line weights. And I'll show you why that's useful. If I choose, say, not thin line, I'm going to choose this one, 0.35 pen, which is just a heavy pen, or medium, medium pen, I should say. Uh, I'm going to choose this line. That's about the line weight. Oh, now it's not showing you the thing I wanted to show you. Let's just do that again. So I'll just try that again. So it's a bit fiddly, but it, when it works, it's really good. So back to, let's just try back to by category. Oh, it's hard in the groups. Let's do one last time. Visible lines. Yeah, okay, so worst case, that's what you have to do. You might have to make it invisible. And then you can simply um, put in a new line, which I'm, I know is sort of sacrilege with Revit, but it's just the only way to get the drawings right because, yeah, it's something with the graphics here, you should be getting a grip. So when you choose the, the line to override it, you get a grip there and you can drag it. But for some reason, I don't know if it's just the setup they've got here, it's not showing it. So, again, simple way. Otherwise, I know you probably won't think about these things until you have to submit a project that you've drawn with Revit and, uh, and you really need to get certain lines to look a certain way. So there we are. So you can simply just draw in that line. Shouldn't have to do this, but you know, just so you can see. That's a perfect steering floor joint, which otherwise is, is really difficult. Uh, so then, uh, the again, back to the ground floor. So here you need to do a bit more setting out. I'm going to do it pretty differently to what's in the example there because that one is um, probably a bit overly complicated. So looking at this stair. Uh, and yeah, so these are coming up from the basement. And and then these are obviously going from the ground floor up to the next floor. So I've got then, looking here, my stairs coming up from the basement. Um, 
showing because of that shaft and I could actually even have the ground floor stairs going over um, over here but uh, I'm not really that concerned about the exact layout and plan what I'm really trying to get here is the height of that stair established because it's a fairly high ceiling there and uh, and that'll give me a good idea of the room the stairs is going to take up so back to stair by sketch and here I'm not going to spend very long setting up even the reference plans and the other things because I just want to get a rough sketch so with the monolithic option again now looking at the count you can see it's got actual number notice how it starts on minus one it's that same thing again and then the width and again the desired number 24 so you want to have an idea of all those things so this really only needs to be a rough stair and uh, well actually what I'll do just to make it really easy is trace the one I already have thing that is probably critical here is that there's a way of having an exit and discharge but I think that'll work <laughs> that could work really well if you had a platform there that went along like say a balcony or something alongside the building um, that was open on one side that's a good place for it to discharge so have a bit of a think about those things as you're putting in the ground floor stair because that's where your exit's going to be otherwise though I can mostly trace this but of course it needs more steps than the previous stair so actually I might just undo that last flight and extend this flight um, at least two steps see how that works and then doing the run again okay so just be careful there when you're doing the join it's okay to have them join at an exact corner like that but if it's slightly below it'll it'll mess everything up it can be above that's okay but it can't be below because then it's chopping off uh, so that should be yeah so that's 24 rises and then I can just again come back one for the monolithic and then finish it and again that, that warning comes up because of the again, that minus one thing but looking in the section now I can see clearly that's one riser below the level it goes to so that's that's correct and I can select the ground floor maybe and 3D view probably copy that just so I've got, so I've got something to work with on all the other levels so you probably have a good idea of this already but uh, if you don't um, essentially with Revit it's not a problem to just put things in very roughly and then change them a lot of people, it's more a problem with people coming from an AutoCAD or even a hand drawing background they try and draw it perfectly from the beginning and some people are just paralysed and won't draw anything until they know the size and everything's worked out uh, but again with Revit hopefully that's something you get used to from the beginning that you just put things in and then gradually refine them and change the properties until they're, they're right so while I've been talking I've just copied and pasted the floor using the you all know that's paste the selected levels option yep and then choosing these levels uh, one two three four five that's right so I've got some plates it doesn't matter that they're not the right shape because it's easy to get at those boundaries and I probably should have done the same at the same time with the columns why not so uh, let's just select all instances visible in view. There we go. And that's oh, no, I don't want that one. Really. Do Sorry. Yes, no, that's right. That's right. Before and then this one. So copy the board, paste the line, select the levels, the levels. So there we go, domino, which is you want know, like domino, the Cabusier. Anyway, have a look for. That, that's what the drawing looks like pretty much you can see it. so then the columns here using filter can all be set to have um, ah what's going on there so I'll just try that again filter oh sorry not columns what am I doing wrong let's chuck for columns so, so so here base offset is right but the top offset is different if it's blank that means it's got different values 
and I can just change that to zero and then that should what? Okay, so good old rabbit. <laughs> so let's do the so I'd have to do in that case I have to do it one at a time one level at a time. So well ground floor should have been right, but I'm just checking it. Uh, so level one, you can see there that the columns go too far, and uh, so let us do it by level. But for some reason, not simply. And so it doesn't take too long though, just to select them like this. And so I've never seen it stop me from doing it that way before. Oh, here we go. This is why. So the last level, it got a bit confused and it put the top level as the level, the same level as the base level. That's why it wouldn't work. So there, I just need to make sure that's got, oh, well, see, it's my fault. I didn't have a level above. So in the section or an elevation, I'm, I'm just going to copy one of the previous levels. up the names later and then back in 30 view can now set the top constraint there to this new level and then top offset zero. There go. Uh, so then back into the plan I can continue with that fire stair but then uh, oh actually sorry maybe I'll just do the shaft first so the the shaft on the um, the lower levels is the wrong shape, so I need to do a new shaft just for the ground floor. And really, because it's only going through one floor, it'd probably be just as easy to edit the boundary of the floor and draw the, the hole with that. But since I'm doing the others with shafts, I'll, I'll do this one as well with a shaft. So back to the ground floor. Again, now just using the shaft tool. And oh, this time I'll change those um, those settings so it, it remembers them next time. So I'm just going to set it to the level above and top offset 150 and then draw just like before basically with a rectangle. Uh, yep, yeah, that'll do for now. And it's only a 5 stair, so I'm not going to too fussy. And then again, make sure I've got something for the floor. supporting the floor and then yeah, yeah, I think they're not looking right that's for the level below so I'm going to go to the section and just see yeah of course that is for the level below so that doesn't make sense but I'm not doing there um, well that's okay it's okay up there but then it's really this shaft here that would need uh, that shape so I'm going to bring this one down and then bring this one up if I can find it. So I just have to uh, do a crossing window and then use filter again to get the shaft. Oh, yeah. Section here. Uh, shaft open now. Yeah. That's better. Ah, so this shaft isn't cutting anything at the moment, but that's okay. I can now extend this down. Um, to make sure it's cutting through the ground floor and that should be right. Uh, yeah, now I think about it, this will need, will need three shafts. Sorry, I'm trying to go too quickly, but that does need to be in. But for now I'll leave it like that. We can, again, these things you can resolve later. So then from level one, there'll need to be another shaft and another fire stair. So the, well, maybe the, uh, the shaft that's coming from this level now, I'll extend just so I get a hole in level one and I can see my stair now. So I'm sure you've all seen that before when you've got a stair coming through the floors, you'll just see the handrails. Um, one other little issue with stairs, you've probably all seen. Uh, down labels, or just labels generally. Let's look at this one. Um, there's down and up. But this one down, do you think you'd ever need that? If you work overseas, maybe, but not, not in Australia. So uh, you should never show a down arrow. 
Um, and uh, so on stairs, you've got this option to show up arrow in all views. You should always tick that option. If it's only stair by sketch, stair by component, it's done differently. But that's really important because then it at least switches them all to up arrows. And then you don't need the label because everyone knows that up an arrow means up. So you can turn the up text off altogether. So you can just say up label uh, and untick it. And, uh, and there we go. So that's how all your stairs should be. And you do need to select each one and, and turn those options on or just select them as a group. Uh, so then now I can go to level one and start drawing the stair that will hopefully extend all the way through to the other levels. So if you go to um, stair by sketch again and uh, this one again will have probably the least number of risers, so that's 19. And then, so in reality it's 18, because again we're doing one less. And uh, so I'll just try starting it on the same point though, just for simplicity. And so here it can be narrower than the previous one. And uh, that should be 500, so again here, that's pretty good. Ah, oh, but I've gone one. Oh, that's good, because that's going to be one minute. So here now, it's giving me a warning. Right, and it's, I know why it's come, come up. It's because I'm really close to the corner there. And it doesn't like that. It's the graphics, the Revit graphics engine. So, I'm going to draw a reference plane. And then move it, using the move tool, and type in 500. and then draw using that instead. So with the run tool again now, I should be able to draw, zoom in and just make sure I'm snapping to the um, intersection of the two reference planes, which it'll probably take me a few tabs to get to. I'm just going to keep doing that until I see them both highlighted. And uh, well, that's actually it there. That is the intersection. But it can be hard to tell. So do you know the shortcut for snaps? Okay, so all object snaps, all the snaps they're called in Revit, um, have a, a shortcut key. So I want intersection here, so it's uh, SI, so it's snap to intersection. Endpoint is SE. Nearest is SN. So SI, again, I'm just going to type SI, and now it'll only find intersections. And you can see down the bottom left corner bit hard to tell but you can see hopefully that the vertical reference plane is being highlighted but also notice how there's the slight blue line going across so that's the reference plane going that way. Okay so yeah that's one of drawing very accurately like that can be painful with Revit but you can you can do it. And there we are now it's working. So it's little fractions of a millimetre that, that cause it to go wrong. Okay, so now again I can just do a um, uh, shaft, and I'll, oh sorry, I'll just adjust this stair first, I forgot to bring it back one, so I can still go back to edit sketch, and bring that back, one just dragging the run line, and now I can do my shaft. So remember this shaft I just brought up temporarily, to get um, a view of the, uh, stairs but I can bring that back down now and make so that's really going to be for this level this shaft is just going to be for that level and then I'm going to have a new shaft that will be from level one above so I'm going to start in the ground floor using the shaft tool uh, but then I'm going to switch straight to level one to make the shape hopefully that's something you're starting to get used to so you just start the object in the, the plan to set the level, but then you can easily switch to any other plan to do the actual drawing. And that's a very common thing in Revit as well. So, uh, so again here I can just trace the shape of the stair maybe to begin with, and that's often a good way. If you're not sure how to work out the size of an opening for a stair, that usually is, is um, going to give you something very close to the, the shape you need. But again, I can make that little adjustment that I know I'll need of having the, the part of the floor 
uh, going under the steps simply by adding in those extra lines there to go around that first step. And there we go, so tick to finish again. And I will then adjust the height in section. While it's open, I can change the uh, top constraint there to uh, level five. Yep. And uh, so now I've got holes all the way through the building. And I'm going to select that stair and change the multi story option to level five as well. Stairs going all through the building. And it takes the railing as well. So if you forget to change the railing type, don't worry because you can easily just change it after multi-story and uh, another one. Oh no, sorry, I thought they all changed. Okay, so, well, easy way. Oh yeah, so, so that one was a separate step, so these all are going to change together. So, select the one. Uh, there we go, that's right. So then this handrail, I think, is the, the one on the wall. Yeah, so that normally can just be deleted. It's a bit hard to see what's, what understand what's happening there because of uh, this dash line, but that's often the case with stairs. And I need to maybe look a bit more closely at this, oh, that void there. So it should be actually going to here. That's better. Now it's not quite so confusing. Uh, but it, it, it's always going to be a little bit confusing, well, often anyway, going to be a little bit confusing when you've got stairs uh, that are on top of each other and they're just off by a little bit to one side or another or often staggered by one step uh, and they're on top of each other it's all what you're going to get issues where you've got dashed lines on top of straight lines it's just just the nature of the geometry um, so then the the walls can be put in following the stairs and you can start to work out a shaft and so we're assuming it is a fire isolated stair so it's got to be of um, a certain thickness and I think 200 is a good starting point it's going to be pretty close to that and 200 is concrete block so that's that's pretty typical for a the shaft of a fire stair and then the height will set to the highest level level six for now I thought I was saying no, doing it the right way level one for now and then um, finish base interior pick the sides of my stair And yeah, I'll even do this side. No, that's probably kind of the side. And this one over here as well. If I can get it. There we go. So I'm sure you can do all of these things in your sleep. And have you seen this when you get walls near columns? Drag it too far and uh, it'll join which is which is actually all right but then if you use the join tool and choose those two things sometimes we'll get this and you might see that that'll happen automatically sometimes so just watch out for that it might be what you want if you want a really conceptual type of drawing that that can be handy that's why they've they've set it up that way but if you don't want it if you notice your columns joining to your walls um, what they are here and you don't want that just go to unjoined geometry and uh, choose those things and it'll unjoin them for you and you can play with the join order too but uh, here if we go to yes, it's a bit painful I don't know why they uh, can make you some other options here but uh, they're well one last thing I'll, I'll show you. So you can join them and then you can try playing around with that switch join order option. So going the other way then. So it's, it's this one and then this one. No, that's not helping. Yeah, it's, it's a really fiddly uh, option. Uh, you've also got the option to disallow join in the wall properties and sometimes that can help. But in this case, uh, it's not doing anything. So I think we just have to live with that. It's weird that it was cleaning up a little bit before, but now it won't. That's again just the way columns are. 
they're a bit like um, stairs, but at least you can join them to other things. Uh, so, oh yeah, and just maybe to finish off with columns, um, so you get a better idea. Um, I think they expect to use architectural columns over structural columns. So they think of architectural columns as the decorative part. And so, and that's why I think a lot of the options for the graphics for the structural columns aren't that well uh, resolved in Rapid. So, and probably you could just live with those issues for now and we can um, go through some other ways of tidying them up afterwards. Uh, so, here you can see that my lift shaft will probably need to be adjusted, but I'll, I'll come back to that. So, for now, I'll just extend this wall and um, then. Well, I'll copy it up to the levels above and then come back and have a look at ways of separating from the basement. So, again, you probably all have an idea about this. Same as before, copy the clipboard, paste the line to selected levels, and again, one to five. Oh, sorry, but I've been, again, going too fast. I've pasted it to all of them when I really just wanted to paste it, sorry, to level one. because now I can go to level one and see, oh, that's right, that's the ground floor stair coming up. So that's actually okay. And then I'll just ch check the top offset. So that's got to be zero. And you could also think about attaching, but don't go too far with things like fire stairs because a lot of those things you'll do uh, as a group at the end as well. So, here again, I'm going to use copy clipboard and now paste the line of selected levels again and put it on to level 2. Go to level 2. And there, yeah, that's what I was expecting. So it's got to be a different shape here because the fire stair doesn't need to be as big. So I can reduce that just by putting the wall with a line in line with the fire stair. And so, wrong order. Let's do that again. A line, fire stair first. Ah, it's trying to get my shaft. So I'll just get the wall at another point and well the shaft does not need to come down as well but I might just sketch that using um, edit sketch and uh, let's, let's line there just to be sure uh, so so now maybe I'll trim that wall but otherwise I can just select those those walls and copy them up to my remaining levels 3 to uh, not six, three to five, and then 3D start to get an idea how that penetration's working, and uh, I probably do the other fire stair at the same time before thinking about anything else. And then looking at the stair coming up from the car park level, it goes, or you can even see, of course, on the ground floor, so it goes, or it comes up to here charges there and then the new stair will come down here also comes out there so as a minimum we'll need a wall blocking off there and so we can have a door it's very rough you know definitely spend more time on it than this but a door there and a door there for example might be okay and that way they're separated even just with a railing there, but it's probably better to have a wall. But I think you can do it just with a railing, and they'll assume that people won't be crazy enough to climb around just so they can go out the wrong way. You never know, though. Someone's going to do it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's the way you want to be working. Again, don't be too try to be perfectionist at this stage. You just want to get all those elements in there because once you do get a floor plate like this, and you know this is. Cabusier's starting point. He came up with all these ideas about modern architecture with a drawing of a building that looked kind of like that and then uh, came up with lots of different variations on it. So with that basic uh, skeleton you can change the foot, foot plates or the, sorry, the uh, floor plates. Um, I don't mind if you just copy these drawings but uh, if you want to do something different, it should be fairly straightforward and still sticking with that basic structure if you can and uh, and including all the elements shown on those drawings. So I didn't get to show you the curtain walls, 
Or maybe I was very quick to do that because something can just put into one of these walls uh, rather than doing another video. Um, so there I've got curtain wall that I showed you last week and I'll just use tab to select a uh, panel. Let's get it from down here. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, that's my fault. I've got the, the panel going into the Marlin still, but I'll worry about that later. It doesn't matter for now. So hopefully you can all select panels using the tab. Go to edit type and get the load button. So I know I showed you last week what happens when, that gray, that, when that's greyed out. So there's a little, that's a simple thing you can fix. So if it's greyed out, it's not, it's, it's uh, not meant to be like that, but you can, you can fix it. And then the families I've given you on the P drive, and then the folder here called Revit Families has a curtain panels folder where, ah, okay, so this one, I'm gonna delete. That's an old one, that's rubbish. This one here called Panel Tilt Glass is a much better glass lever. Well, I think it's better to run that. So I'm gonna double click to bring that in. Uh, and so the only property here that really matters is the tilt. And, uh, oh, and I did that as an instance anyway, so I'll just show you if I click OK. They're glass levers. Like I said, they're, there's a fixed number, and I've forgotten what that number is, but it's, say, 15 levers. We'll come back to how that can be adjusted. But, uh, but again, the critical property is this angle. So I can change that to, let's say, 45 and they all, they all change. And if you've got 100 louver panels in your curtain walls and, uh, and you want to change the angles, that's, that's the easiest way. And, and they can all be different. So you can have 20 different louver panels all with different angles if you want to. But you can, it's fairly easy. If you need to change them all together, right click and select all instances in the entire project and then you can just change it over here. So it does work really well. But again, the issue that I have, or the thing that I just haven't needed to um, set up parametrically, um, I'm not sure how to do that later actually, but for now it's got 3500, which is a very high panel height anyway, that's probably too high. So I would think about reducing that first before trying to increase the, the number of louvers. And so I'll take it down to uh, 2800, which is more typical not letting me because it's pinned so let's unpin that and do it again that's better so that works pretty well with that number of louvers anyway let's say we want 2500 then we've got a problem because the louvers are obviously too many so to fix it for now before we look at um, doing a bit more with families just use tab to select it then you get the edit family button and then you can just delete any that you don't need so I'll delete two from the top load into project and then override existing version don't use this option if you're not sure what it does just don't use it it's it's generally better to use the one at the top and there we go so it's taken two out maybe I can even take three out but that's okay it's sticky for a little bit as well um, so, so that should be a useful family for you. And the other one that's very similar, um, I'll go again and load it into this other panel. Uh, while I'm at it, why don't I make a shortcut here? I'm going to drag this folder over to the left in that quick access bar, that grey bar there. You can have as many shortcuts as you want, and to make you just drag folders into that and uh, so now the other one is panel tilt solid so like I said they're pretty similar but I, these are actually from a project where I uh, I built a um, well I had a curtain wall that uh, that had these these different types of louvers so so I realized that they're actually different the the glass ones tended to be hinged from the center, but the solid ones tend to be hinged from the from the edge. Yeah. So 
So when you adjust those, they just work a bit differently. I think they actually look a lot better. So if it's a decorative thing and you want to get a certain appearance, when you've got that sort of look with the facade where you've got a lot of horizontal elements um, that you can do with the louvers, you can do that with this one. Just changing the angle there. Let's go to five, which is almost flat. So again, they just hinge slightly differently. It's hard to see there, but there we are. So they're just hinging further out. So they'll stick out a bit more than the, the glass ones do. And that can be good for facades to get a bit more variation and make a bit of a pattern. So hopefully that pen will be useful for you. And uh, honestly, I think even with this building, uh, if you did it exactly like that, but just put in a more interesting pattern on the facade, using different curtain wall panels rather than just all these plain glass things would already be a lot more interesting. And if you have a look at you know have a look at a Montreal painting or something to see how just a pattern of grids can be beautiful and, and you know really interesting with you know a few different colours and some different shaped rectangles but still a uh, very simple pattern. And uh, you know if you're wondering how Seidler came up with a lot of his ideas I reckon that's what he did. He just copied Mondrian and look at, say, you know, the Rose Seidler. You all know. And if you live up North Shore, oh, well. the Rose Seidler house is Seidler's probably most famous house. It was his first one in Australia. Like a lot of these guys, they, he had rich parents who let him design the house for them. And, uh, Glenn Merkett, similar story, his brother did the same. He's a very talented architect though. And uh, so, but this pattern, you know, that's a beautiful pattern. And he's got that on all the facades, something like that. And, uh, you know, look at the colours. That's the other giveaway. Red, yellow, blue. It's like Mondrian. I'm sure that he got that pattern from his paintings. And he probably would have admitted it when he was alive. But again, just shows you with curtain walls. That's that's really what you want to be looking at, and you can do these really nice designs based on pretty simple geometry. Instead of all that you know, deconstructing isn't always crazy things are interesting, but sometimes I think the buildings don't look as good as as these simpler things or things that are easier to make, but that then look better. So best of both worlds. Um, so anyhow, hopefully that's going to give you a lot to go on with and uh, so again just try to get as much of those floor plates done and filled in with the interior elements just using the things from the library or that are there with your project already most of the wall types will be there and uh, so the final thing I'll say there is that if you think you don't have a wall type for the, uh, the things you need in plan especially so looking at the upper levels uh, don't overcomplicate it use um, the simplest wall types you can. You can always change them to a more complicated one later. And uh, there's nothing wrong with just using even the generic walls. So the generic 100, 200, 300, and it's not that hard to change them to, again, a more complicated one later. And, uh, and that could even be at CC stage. DA stage, you may be able to just do very simple walls. Um, so, so anyhow, there was a lot of drawing to do, but it should be pretty fun, I like doing things like this. And uh, and don't forget to copy as many families as you can as well uh, while you're here, because that might be something you'll need. Yeah, so yeah, just let me know if there's anything else, but otherwise hopefully that's going to keep you all pretty busy. <laughs> and I know you're probably thinking of having a break, but they've been telling us